Big thing on President Biden's agenda is his face to face tomorrow with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. It will be their first sit down at the White House since McCarthy was elected Speaker. From the White House to Capitol Hill, everyone will be watching to see how this meeting sets the stage for the debate and fight over raising the debt ceiling in the coming months. Here's President Biden moments ago on his message for McCarthy. McCarthy, one more. Will you negotiate with McCarthy? Show me his budget. Show me his budget. <laughs> if you weren't clear on that, joining me right now is Democratic Congressman Brad Sherman of California to talk more about this. Congressman, thanks for coming in. You heard what President Biden had to say, his message to McCarthy is, which is, show me your budget. When they do sit down, what do you really, beyond that tagline, what do you want the president, president's message to be when it comes to the debt ceiling? Well, first, we should be negotiating or discussing spending and uh, revenue. We do that all the time, 24-7. What we should not be doing is letting Kevin McCarthy take as hostage the American people. You see, we're already hurting our economy by playing around with the debt limit. There are investments not being made, projects not going forward, because we're stupidly talking about not paying our bills. The thing to do when you have a fiscal problem is you either spend less or you bring in more revenue. You don't enhance your position by just throwing away the bills and not paying them. So I hope his message is, is first and foremost, we need to increase or suspend the debt limit. Second is the message you just heard, show me your budget. Because the position of the Republicans is they have no idea what spending they want to cut. So what they say is cut the waste, cut the fat. That's like going in and asking for ground round and taking your knife and saying, oh, I'm going to cut the fat out of this ground uh, beefsteak. The fact is, if you're going to have a government program, there's going to be some inefficiency. Everybody's got some inefficiency in their day to day. Um, to say that we're going to cut programs and somehow not cut services because we're going to only deal with the fat is absurd. Congressman, part of, of course, everyday reality, and you've been around there long enough to know on Capitol Hill, is the politics of negotiation. And what we're looking at, it aptly described by my colleague Manuraju, is this whole thing is currently in the posturing phase. So I'm wondering maybe what's all being said right now matters less than some might think. And if that is the case, when does it start mattering? When does the positions stated publicly start? When do they start mattering? Is that, do you think it's going to be all the way until you're, you know, you get to wait until you're hard up against the debt ceiling in June before people really start talking? Well, again, we've got to deal with this now. It's taking away from our economy now. But if God forbid this goes into July and we actually do go off the cliff, then we lose, uh, according to Moody's analytics, uh, uh, six million jobs. We see a $15 trillion loss of wealth in the country. So we've got to deal with this debt limit now. As to spending, every penny that's being spent now is pursuant to bills that a lot of Republicans voted for late last year. And starting October 1st, the American government will not spend a single penny that McCarthy hasn't agreed to. So he's got a chance to talk about spending. He doesn't know what he wants to say about spending, but he is taking the American people hostage uh, through this debt limit. We'll see where we will see where this is headed. I'll have you back on to discuss that. I do also want to ask you what we just learned this morning, which is George Santos is now removing himself from committee assignments. Republicans in the media this morning came out and said that he's doing it in part because of the Republican efforts underway to remove Democratic Congresswoman Elon Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee, a committee you sit on. Do you think this move by Santos makes it more or less likely that Omar will be removed from the committee? I don't think it'll have any effect. I think Santos needs to spend all his time fighting these investigations. His outrageous lying about his background, particularly claiming that he is the descendant of Holocaust survivors, when that's clearly false. That's the most offensive thing. That's what got, has generated a lot of anger and news coverage. But we'll t what will take Santos down is the boring financial stuff. He lied uh, on his personal financial disclosure statement and uh, no doubt on his uh, uh, campaign finance statements as well. It's uh, lying about your family background, uh, especially involving the Holocaust, is outrageous. Lying on your financial forms, that's a felony. In those investigations, we do know investigations are underway into that. Congressman, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.